Hey, hey, it's TDA and welcome to episode 6 of this super proliferation run. And today we are going to do exactly what I promised you last time and that is build a giant mall. Or, not sure if I've actually promised you that because I promised you I think that we were going to automate our ILSs. But I figured once we're automating those buildings we might as well automate everything. Now before you continue and place down this blueprint I do want to emphasize that you should have researched at this point all your yellow science buildings like gas giants, uh, ray receivers that you all probably already have uh, and things like the particle collider and the satellite power. All of those buildings are in the mall but if you haven't actually researched them and you place down the mall you will get an empty assembler because the game says hey you don't know this recipe I'm going to place that down for you. So. Be warned, make sure you do your research first. If you already have done your uh, research, you can place this down. If you do, make sure you stand in the middle of the pole. I will explain why in a second. If you haven't done your research, just continue with the next few builds that I will show you while you wait for your research to complete and then go back and build your mold. There's no huge problem with that. And the next few builds that I will show you actually assume that you don't have your more completely up and running because they are intended to get you to that point so you will actually need to also upgrade the next few builds after you build them for the same reason as with the previous builds because i assume you don't have all um, your buildings automated just yet but once we're done with the next few builds you will have that so you can automate everything upgrade everything and from that point on we will assume you actually do have access to everything now why do you need to be standing in the middle of your pole when you build that? Well, I will show you um, as soon as I get the blueprint up and running. The blueprint is kind of awesome, um, but it only has a ton of ILSs and you might not have access to all of that yet. There's only one side of the middle ILS that has outgoing belts and on that side of that ILS are, for example, the buildings that produce the PLS and ILS as well as the vessels. So the inner ring on the side where the belts are are the ILSs that you want to place down first because that will actually automate your ILS production from that point on so you can stop handcrafting them. Well after that is complete um, you might find that you are running very low on power so I have a second blueprint that I call the ring of power that is supposed to go snugly around your um, mall and that will help you make sure you don't dip too low on power and remember of course that once these ILSs are actually fully charged um, they will stop draining your power so from that point on you should not have any more power issues because you have the ring of power around this um, and if you're building along with me you will also have this solar hub on the other side of the pole so you will always have at least one pole fully in sunlight and therefore have a ton of power now let me complete this build and then let's, let's meet back and walk you quickly through that. Okay, there we go. Um, as you can see, a nice ring of power with, with nicely charging everything up. And pretty much every building up until this point should be in here. I hope I didn't forget anything. If I did, please point it out to me and I'll add that in. Um, but I think I got everything. So on your request, I also put in a few boxes, as you can see that you can use to input your um, Mark 1 and Mark 2 sorters, your Mark 1 belts, basically all the stuff that you will be replacing along the way, you can put in this box and recycle them. They will um, nicely go into the uh, production line, they will be proliferated and everything. So that is of course assuming that we have our proliferation up and running, which will be one of the next things we um, focus on. But you don't have to waste any of the old uh, buildings like this. And specifically, for example, the um, belts, you will have thousands of belts already placed down. And this way you can just recycle them all if that's what you want. If you want to delete them, of course, go ahead and feel fine to do that as well. Now, all the buildings are in here, uh, even the more advanced stuff like particle colliders and uh, chargers, things like that. Even the um, fission plant is in here as well as the orbital collector so all the later game stuff that we actually haven't actually built any of the builds for but as soon as we do you will get that production started um all the basic stuff is in here as well so like power miners smelters etc etc and of course even things like um the power poles this time around i included them and last but not least the newer buildings like the geothermal power plant as well as the stacker which we refuse to call piler 
are in here. So all the stuff, uh, including everything from this patch that you might want, even things that I personally never use, like the satellite um, power, everything is in here. So as soon as you supply your mall with whatever items you need to produce a building, this will start. Um, as you can see, it's all Mark 1 belts, Mark 2 sorters, and Mark 1 assemblers. So you feel free to upgrade this as well as you go along. It's actually not essential that you do so. Um, of course, it does help with things like your belt production, etc. Um, with most of these buildings, uh, you don't want to be producing in high quantities anyway. So it doesn't really matter if you have a Mark 1 or Mark 2 assembler making them. And the materials on the belts themselves also don't necessarily um, are heavily impacted by how fast the belt is. But I do suggest that you upgrade this as soon as you get some of the stuff going. Because why not? You might as well speed up the production while you're at it. Okay, now in order to actually make sure all of this works, because as you can see, not everything is currently working for me either. Um, and that is for the simple reason that, for example, I don't have enough drones going around yet. Uh, I don't have enough ILSs set up. So you want to fix that. And in order to fix that, we will need some um, more builds to get that up and running. So let's get to it. Okay, just before we do that, a quick tip on how you can upgrade your facilities. So for example, in this case, I have a full box of uh, turbines over here, which is kind of annoying to try and filter through a inventory that if you're anything like me is probably full anyway so click the box set the capacity to zero so that doesn't fill up while you're moving stuff around place down a new box control click the inputs on your um, storage as you can see you all grab kind of whatever doesn't fit in your inventory goes on your mouse then click on the new box and put it in and now you have an empty box over here. You can just remove that. You'll have a little bit of surplus, but that's not the biggest deal. And then you can simply place down your ILS and go from there. So that's a very easy way to upgrade your facility without having to manually move everything up and down because it works the other way around as well. Uh, assuming, of course, you set your item in your facility like this. Control click your box, click on your ILS and put them in there. And you're done and you can remove the box. All right, let's jump to our first build. Okay, and I'm back on Reddington because we have a ridiculous amount of resources on this planet, so we might as well put them to use. And the first build, as you can see, it is not exactly the most exciting build in the game, but it is very important that you have it because in the end you will need a lot of iron just to build things like drones, um, belts, sorters, etc. So, yeah. Again, not the most exciting, but however, I did now start including the ILSs in the blueprints. So even though you will still need to upgrade the belts and sorters, or at least the belts uh, on these builds, it will at least uh, make sure that you don't have to bother about uh, putting in the belts for the um, proliferation and you don't need to bother about the ILSs. They will be in the build already. Now, um, a little bit of personal preference before you guys start shouting at me in the comments. I put in a uh, proliferation belt like this. I kind of like how it goes around and it recycles by itself. And I put it on the other side as well. You can do that more efficiently. Of course, you could make a belt go around here or something like that, but it looks really ugly. And because these ILSs are set to uh, local demand and remote demand, as soon as one of these ILSs actually has enough proliferation units, it will automatically grab it from the other one as well, assuming you put one or two drones in. So. Might as well make it look pretty well we're at it, don't you think? All right, um, yeah, that is the first build. Not too impressive. The second build won't be much more impressive either, but we'll build it up towards the end. Okay, here is our second build. Not quite exciting yet, at least not in terms of the size, but it's a quite nice looking build. And to be honest, I expect this might be the only time you have to build this because cogs are not used in that many places. Uh, and this will actually produce one uh, full belt of cogs as soon as you've upgraded it to the um, maximum level belts and second level assemblers. Now this is a build that quite nicely demonstrates the power of proliferation because normally in order to get 30 cogs per second and on a uh, mark 2 assembler type of level you would actually need 30 of those assemblers. We only have 24 over here. Um, because of the proliferation going on. And then normally those 30 assemblers would also need 30 smelters. 
and we only have 20 smelters over here. And that's where you can see that we've now reduced the amount of smelters by one third. So there's 10 smelters missing and there's six assemblers missing. Um, and we still get the same amount of output from this build. So quite nice, quite simple as well. But once again, yeah, you're gonna need those cogs <laughs> in your um, mall as well as in a few other places. So yeah, it's a necessary build. But now let's move on to something a little bit more exciting than this. Okay, and here we are back on our main production planet where we have our turbine built and our particle container built. And the reason I put these two together is because we will actually kind of siphon off the builds that we've already made in order to make our next two builds. So what we want is um, two more things. So specifically we want magnetic rings, super magnetic rings to be exact. And in order to make those, we are going to need more turbines. So I am going to borrow this little build over here. Use now and copy that right into here. And now the nice thing you can do with these builds is you can align them with the builds that we already have. And as you can see, if you do it like this, this will exactly match up the um, spray coaters. And that will mean that it happens in every single section because the builds are so symmetric. And similarly, what we will also do is we will um, cut out a little piece of this and that is the engine part, which is this. I'm just making sure I'm taking the right part. And once again, we can cut that out, say use now, and then we have a little engine built. And again, make sure you align that because it will allow you to do something really cool in a second. Um, yeah, something like this will work. There we go. Now, um, just copy and pasting this is not going to make the ratios perfect by itself. So I am going to kind of adjust these builds, um, go through them from back to forth, and then show you the end result. And then we can have a brief discussion about how I changed the builds and why I changed the builds like that. So be right back. And there we go. We now have the builds complete. Now, what did I change? In order to get the super magnetic rings, if you look at the recipe, we are going to need some magnets and graphite along with the turbines. Now, this build that I've just made is using the 10 per second turbines that we get out of our original build. And then we have to add in some magnets and graphite. So building like this, even if you're using proliferation, is quite straightforward. You do need, of course, to check your math because in this specific example, the magnets are used in three different places actually no sorry four different places um so that means that you do need to make sure how many times am i actually going to proliferate until i get to the point where the magnets are being used um but because the turbines are one of the end products at least in one of the last steps all we needed to do was add in the additional smelters for the magnets for the um super magnetic rings themselves that is 18 in total quite a lot because as you can see these things do take up quite a lot of magnets and in addition to that, we need some graphite and actually not that much. So I just added in um, exactly eight smelters to be exact. And of course, that also means that we need an incoming belt for coal, um, as well as a new incoming belt for the um, iron ore. And as you can see, I also added in, in this, these next few builds, I already added in the ILSs. So you don't have to do that yourself. So assuming you have any ILS somewhere in your universe supplying uh, copper, iron and coal base materials, this build should instantly work. Now this that is a big if, so um, by all means make sure that you set up your production and actually the next episode is going to focus a little bit on actually making sure that everything we've built up to this point will actually function. Um, at least function in the way we want it to, because of course right now it's a, a build that still needs to be upgraded. Oh damn it's so dark on this planet. Um, most of this build has been unchanged, but of course I did need to adjust the last bit a little bit. So we have an outcoming belt with turbines now. We also have the magnets as you can see over here. And we have the um, graphite on this belt over here. And then once again, we have this whole zigzag thing going on. I think it looks pretty cool actually. And that will allow us to then start building some uh, magnets. So as you can see, this build is really underpowered at the moment, mainly because I am really low in all the ores. Um, so it's not ideal and we will need to fix that very soon. But for now it is working. We are still getting some um, 
Supermagnetic rings. I um, already boosted it a little bit by putting in some uh, iron ore. I haven't focused it on that too much. So as soon as I put up a few more ILSs with um, iron ore, this will start to function really quickly. Now, um, one little trick you can use with these builds, these proliferated builds, is that you can actually um, use the last step inputs. So in this case, graphite as well as magnetic rings. Uh, along with the turbines of course uh, and you can kind of feed them through the end and back into the final ILS so if you look at this I am now supplying super magnetic rings in this build but if at any point I am overproducing something compared to the demand for the super magnetic rings so basically the um, as you can see for example right now the magnets and graphite are being produced faster than they're being used in this build I might as well continue the belt on just a little bit longer and put them in the ILS um, so that now I'm kind of sneakily increasing my production or my supply I should say of in this case magnets and graphite so it's a little bit of bonus production that is not going to be something you want to rely on because of course ideally this build is working non-stop on making the um, super magnetic rings but for example, right now I am under supplying, I think it's copper probably. Um, so this build is actually not working at full speed. No problem um, because I'm still supplying graphite and magnets now to my system. And of course I do need to fix the copper because once again, this is not the end goal, but it's a nice little bonus that you might want to uh, make use of. I'll put those in the next few builds uh, where it makes sense. Um, but once again, make sure you don't make this build just because you want magnets um obviously that doesn't make sense but just calling that out now um that's the magnetic rings built quite straightforward and of course a little bit more straightforward even is the engines now um really really dark on this planet why 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 anyway um for the engines we actually uh, can cut a little bit of the iron um production there was a little bit more in it that strictly speaking was necessary um, I scaled it down slightly because I needed to round up here and there because of the turbines in the original build. Um, because we are not making turbines in this build, I could cut most of the magnet smelters because of course now we only need them for the uh, coils uh, that are going into the engines themselves. Also meant I could, could cut quite a bit of the coils production, um, even a slight amount of the um, cog production actually because that, uh, once again it was rounded up here and there. Um, and some of the copper. Now I actually did leave the uh, area open here as you can see. Why? Because this makes sure we are still aligning our spray coders. Now, um, last but not least, um, the engine production itself, quite straightforward as you can see. And in this case, I decided to only connect the magnetic coils to this. We already have a build that we just built for the uh, cogs and the iron. So. You don't need huge amounts of those and if you do it's, you're probably better off just making a small build for these but the coils themselves um, is a nice little bonus we actually haven't made a specific build for the magnetic coils just yet so we might as well um, do it like this now, as you can see this build is also kind of starving because i haven't set up the uh, core production just yet for the raw ore so if you look at this uh, you can actually see we do have a copper but we need some more iron ore now that is something I will fix off screen, so you don't need to sit through that. But I do want to show you one more cool thing um, before we wrap up this episode. And this episode is deceptively short, mainly because I didn't walk you through all the, set, the, the building of all these builds, mainly because they're kind of rehashing what we already did. Uh, but it will take you quite a bit of time to set up these ILSs, uh, optimize your production change that we've put down in the previous episodes. And of course, after this, you do want to make sure that you start upgrading the stuff we already have in place. Now, if you look at your mall, you should probably see, and I hope I don't make this mistake showing you something while it's not working. Um, but yeah, as you can see, um, I have 56 ILSs waiting for me right now. We have quite a bit of vessels waiting for me as well. Um, I have even a lot more in my inventory because I already stole quite a bit. As you can see, I have plenty of vessels now to go. I have some drones in my inventory as well that are being built somewhere over here. Yeah, there we go. Uh, another 84 waiting for us to go. And let's see. 
look, we already have conveyor belts coming in because the only thing we were lacking for that was the magnetic rings. So as soon as I kind of fire up the production from of a raw ore along with these uh, nice little ILSs and vessels that I have available, you should really see this kick started and then you can start upgrading your stuff. Um, let me actually check, do we have the sorters being produced now as well? Where are they or are they? Hello, autosave. Um, sorters, sorters. Somewhere in the middle, right? There we are. Uh, no, we don't actually have those. And why not? Because we ha don't have the engine production up and running just yet. Um, so once again, once I fix that, this will start producing and you can really start upgrading your stuff. Now, last thing I do want to show you while we still have daylight. Uh, this is actually requesting the proliferators already. Now the awesome thing we can do, remember you, to, you can press tab to select what you want outgoing on a belt. And now we can do this all the way through, all the way through, all the way through. Now we wanted a super facility, we will get a super facility all the way through, all the way through. And there we go. And we wrap it around. I don't think there's any spray coders on this specific line. So we can go all the way through here. And all the way back. And this is the reason I didn't include the belts for these things in the original blueprints because how awesome is it to simply weave through a belt like this, through all these spray coders. Oh, no, 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 no. Why did you go down? Why did you go down? Well, make sure you don't do that. I'm not sure why that suddenly decided to go down after all this time. Um, but yeah, you can kind of weave through all of these spray coders like this. And once again, um, keep in mind that this is designed for Mark III proliferators. And that is kind of key. And I'll just quickly show you why. Um, because these have, by default, these have 60 sprays. 60 sprays, so if you're supplying just one per second, um, 60 sprays is able to uh, spray 60 sprays per second, so to speak. So that's two full belts of materials that you can spray with just one proliferator per uh, second. Now we are going to be producing a lot more than that and most of these belts won't be full belts. So by doing so, we can actually supply this entire belt as long as we have enough proliferators going on, we should be able to supply the entire belt with proliferators, even though it's one continuous belt. Um, by default it's 60, but we're also going to proliferate our proliferators, which uh, increases the amount of sprays by a large amount, by 25% to be exact. So then we have a fifth, uh, 75 sprays per proliferator, um, which assuming that we use the max back, uh, belt speed of 30 per second is going to be way more than we could ever connect to one single belt. So don't worry too much about the fact that we connect so many belts to the uh, spray coders, or I should say so many spray coders to this single belt because it will work out just fine. It will take a while. For... Is it going down again? Yes. Stop doing that. Um, it will take a while for the proliferators to actually saturate your entire um, builds. It's not the biggest problem in the world. It just takes some patience. And remember the builds will function without proliferation as well, just not optimally. So it's not a big problem if it takes a while for everything to get going. Of course, there's also proliferation going on in your mall. So you will also need to take that into account. It will take a while for that to completely saturate as well. That does mean that you should not be um, over requesting the amount of proliferators per um, ILS, um, which is once again why I left those out of the initial blueprints. Um, but I will be adding in self-sufficient proliferation in every other build from now on. So you don't have to worry too much about interconnecting those um, to your existing builds if you don't want to. And quite frankly, it's probably too much hassle to do that anyway. So um, self-sufficient builds coming up. But yeah, uh, keep that in mind. And I'm not sure why I just connected that last bit. That does not make any sense. So let's remove that again. There we go. 
So now we have one giant facility. Let, let's let's take it from a birch view perspective. Um, as you can see, this belt is, is starting here, zigzag, zigzag, like here, and then up, and then down, and then all the way through. And actually, I forgot this little uh, spray coder over here, so I'll need to add one more in, uh, as well as I think here near the end, are we actually spraying the um, particle containers? No, we're not. So let me add those last few in, and um, then we can wrap this up. Okay, and there we go. I connected up the belt to the spray coders correctly this time around. And before you all jump in the comments and tell me that I've added too many spray coders. Yes, I know, but that's by design. Um, as you can see, for example, over here, I added in spray coders for the graphene and the copper, even though they should already be proliferated, but they're not. And the reason that they're not is because we are not actually proliferating anything at this point, or at least not on this planet next episode so don't worry we'll fix all of that um but that does mean that we have quite a few materials in our systems that is currently not proliferated so a few in a few places in the builds and i'm i'm not doing that everywhere but just in a few places here and there where it makes sense and it's really easy and convenient to do like for example over here we're spraying the particle containers anyway and there's two belts next to that so might as well just place two more and extend that belt a little further um, I am actually going to kind of over proliferate some of the items. Um, if the items on the belt are already proliferated, nothing goes to waste. So don't worry too much about wasting proliferators or anything like that. Other than it will buffer a little bit of sprays in the system. So you will waste in that regard a little bit of proliferation. Uh, but it's only a tiny amount compared to the amount that we'll have in our systems. And by doing so, we make sure that we get all the unproliferated stuff out of our systems as fast as we can and um, the same thing holds for the um, mall that i've built there's a few places in there where i'm also re-proliferating some stuff for exactly that reason so if you're wondering why that is this is why i've added those in so you can shout in the comments all you want feel free to do so but i stick with my guns i think it makes sense to do that now uh, let's just take a quick look at our nice little super facility as you can see it's quite nicely shaping up and uh, yeah there in there's a few uh, ILSs that I need, still need to place and stuff like that but other than that this is pretty much what where we want to be we have our mall up and running as well if we take a brief look I think we should see the um because this one uh, nope of course it isn't we have the Mark III belts coming in. Yeah, over here, as you can see, it's only 250 in there. And as I mentioned before, the production is not really going all that fast, simply because we still need to make sure we supply the system with more raw ore. But as soon as we've done that, this should take care of itself. Now, um, I am going to stop myself right here because honestly, this part of the game is so much fun that I'm kind of inclined to kind of do everything in one episode. Um, but I realized that all of the stuff that we've done in this episode will take you quite some time to set up properly. We do need to realign the systems that we've already had in place with those ILSs. You might want to build a few um, ILSs specifically to supply ore to the system. Um, if you're playing on my seed, Reddington, the uh, lava planet, is awesome when it comes to supplying stuff to your system in terms of raw ore because there's a huge amount of that on that specific planet and um, yeah next episode we will make sure we get our proliferation mark 3 going we will set up some um, other facilities to kind of kickstart the rest of our close to end game and then we will start preparing for the next few steps in our technology in terms of science warpers things like that speaking of warpers before I forget I did already take that into account when placing these ILSs in these builds. So as you can see, these are already requesting warpers. So they are completely ready for end game. Um, even though you can't actually um, use the warpers in the building itself because we haven't unlocked that technology yet. We need the next science for that. Um, but this will allow us to make sure that we're setting it up and we don't have to retrace back to every single ILS. Um, if we don't have to similarly i will also set up the mall with that but once again that does need that does require you to have done all the research specifically you need to have researched uh this one 
so that you can actually build the warpers in order to set them in your uh, blueprints. So if you build them without having this researched, you will actually not see it in your buildings. Uh, I set that intentionally in this example to show you what that would look like. You will find a few ILSs. Let me find one like this one over here where it doesn't have anything set in the slot just yet. Uh, if that's the case, that's because I intended there to be warpers in that slot. Now, don't worry, I will revisit that as soon as we build those warpers, but in case you're wondering why there's empty slots in some of these buildings, that's why. All right, um, I hope you enjoyed this one, guys, and I will catch you in the next one where we will start proliferating everything. <laughs>